Welcome to Ditch Auto, my name's Jared, and today we're gonna take a look at the Sony RX100 Mark IV. Now, this is a fantastic little piece of hardware, and I decided to buy it because I wanted something that I could easily carry with me and pocket. Most other cameras that I have, I can't do that. The smallest camera that I have that's a Sony is the A5100. Once you put a lens on it, it's just not pocketable anymore. It's a fantastic camera, but you know, it's just not as convenient as something as small as this. So when this camera came out, I decided to grab one. Now I haven't had one of these models before. A lot of people asked me when I did the unboxing and first initial thoughts video, uh, how it could compare to the Mark III or even earlier versions of this camera. And I personally can't respond to that because I haven't owned other versions of them. All I have is my experiences that I have came across online, just things that I found online that other people have said. So let's talk about what this camera is and what it is great at. So what's awesome about this camera is that it's small. It is not a whole lot larger than a business card in size. Of course, it's thicker than a business card, but nonetheless, it is very small and it packs a lot of features. So it's four inches in its overall width, um, an inch and five eighths in depth. So I mean, it's, it's really small. And it weighs 10.5 ounces when you have the battery and the memory card in it. So it's really light. You put it in your pocket and you aren't really gonna notice it. I barely notice it more than I would notice having a cell phone in my pocket. So this camera takes 20.1 megapixel still images. That's a pretty large image, larger than what most of us need. However, it does that through a Zeiss lens, which is what I was really excited about. I came from shooting Canon um, about a half a year ago, I switched over from Canon to Sony. And so my transition process, I've been learning a lot about the different things that Sony puts into their cameras. For example, a Canon equivalent of this camera is not gonna have the same features and as good quality of glass. This Sony camera has the Zeiss Vario Sonar T lens um, that's also a 10 element lens in nine different groups. So there's a lot going on inside this lens and then it also has the Zeiss coating over the glass which makes for just those beautiful sharp pictures, cuts down on reflection and all that good stuff as well. Talking more about the lens, it has a maximum aperture of 1.8. It is variable though, so when you're zooming in, that aperture will change to a maximum of 2.8. So when you're zoomed all the way in, in telephoto mode, you're getting 2.8 aperture, which is still pretty good. It's much better than most other cameras, which start at 2.8, and then the variable goes even up to 5.6 on a lot of these point and shoot cameras. So the iris inside is a seven blade iris, which means when you're shooting at those wider apertures, like 1.8, um, and you're exposed properly, you're gonna get that shallow depth of field and that, that fall off is gonna be fantastic. The term bokeh, which is kind of that creamy, circular background that you get um, when your camera is is wide open, when the lens is wide open, you're gonna be able to achieve that with a camera like this. And I have been able to achieve beautiful photos with short depth of fields um, that just are fantastic. One other nice feature of this camera, considering that when you are adjusting the aperture, you have a maximum aperture, or a minimum aperture, I'm sorry, of F11, is that it does have a built-in ND filter. It's digital though, so you can set it to auto or you can turn it on or off. I found that setting it to on or off is best uh, because if you set it to auto, then you're really, you're always changing your settings because uh, drastically because the camera is turning on that ND and sometimes turning it back off. So I found leaving the ND off unless you need it and then turn it on manually inside the back of the camera. So this lens is a 24 to 70 millimeter lens, which also was very attractive to me because when I'm shooting with my DSLRs or now with the Sony mirrorless alpha cameras that I use, the 2470 typically is my go-to lens. It's a great range of uh, focal range for a camera for when you're shooting close-ups or you need a little bit of zoom to get something uh, a little bit further away from you. So the 2470 is great and it also has up to 11x digital zoom. So if you need to go in further, you can with that digital zoom. 
The lens has optical steady shot during photo capture. So it is steadying the shot for you during photo capture. When you're shooting video, it kind of handles that digitally. I don't think it's handling it in the lens, um, in my opinion the steady shot seems to work better with photos than it does in video. So when you're taking photos, you can take up to 16 frames per second before this camera cuts out. That is a lot of photos. So put it in continuous, hold down that button, and it's just gonna fire off 16 shots per second before it starts to choke out on you, probably due to buffering or anything like that. So lots of photos for you action shooters who wanna take pictures of your kids or fast moving things, uh, sporting events and stuff like that. It does have four focus modes like most other cameras. It has single shot, continuous, DMF, and manual focus. So manual focus I, I like to use when I'm shooting video um, just simply because uh, I don't have that, that focus searching going on nearly as much. However, uh, continuous focus works fantastic in video. We'll talk about video a little bit more here in a moment. The focus is cont contrast detection, which is great, but not at the same time. It doesn't focus as well as some of my other cameras that have phase detection and contrast. However, it does focus really well. I took this, I bought this camera right before we left for a two week vacation with my family. And I took a lot of photos and shot a lot of video with it. And never did I have an instance where this camera frustrated me. Now, a DSLR, I typically have situations where maybe it would frustrate me over something. It's either too heavy or um, it isn't focusing or when I'm trying to shoot video, the lens is searching back and forth and, and making noise and making the picture look weird. This camera didn't do any of that stuff. So it also has an ISO that's expandable up to 25,600, which is pretty high for a small point and shoot. In my experiences, when you're taking photos and you start to get up towards that high ISO, the photos kind of become unusable. They get really noisy and just they're just not good. However, it is better than nothing. And when you're shooting in video mode, you can still go up pretty high with ISO. And so if the low light situation is gonna call for some additional help, you can increase that in this camera, which is a really nice feature. It does also have built-in noise reduction, which I have set to low. I tend to like uh, to be able to control noise reduction in software like Adobe Lightroom afterwards. I don't like the camera to do too much of that smoothing. I would rather do that on my own so that I can control that because once you've let your camera do that noise reduction and smooth the photo too much, then you're gonna have a hard time getting back some of that detail in your photo. So uh, I typically do that in post-production. One of the other options that's really great about this camera is the, the ring here, the control ring that's on the lens. Um, you can set it to do a couple of different things and typical it's a typical feature of point and shoot cameras around this price range as I've had a Canon point and shoot in the past that had a control ring that allowed me to make adjustments. I have it set so that I can make adjustments to my aperture. With this camera, I'm always shooting in manual mode. It's by habit, I shoot in manual mode with all of my cameras. And so being able to adjust my aperture on this ring here is fantastic because uh, I don't have to go into any settings or hit any buttons or anything like that. I could just adjust my exposure by rotating the ring, which uh, is just great. So what I also like about this camera for those situations where it's just, it's hard to see with this little screen on the back because maybe it's super bright out. Um, you're, you're just having a hard time seeing, which this screen on the back is bright and I almost never have any problems. But the EVF that's on this that pops up really easily that actually powers up the camera in uh, when you pop it up and then you have to slide this out, which this is the only thing that I think is a little clunky is that you have to slide the EVF out and then you're ready to use it. However, for such a tiny screen, this is probably the highest quality tiny screen I've ever seen in my life. It is fantastic and you can see great detail in your photo here. I would say if you're even trying to preview a photo back that you took and you're not sure if, it, if it's you know in focus and that good from the screen because it's really bright outside and it's hard to see, use the EVF. So you push the EVF back in and down and it actually powers down the camera. So it saves you a step when you're going to use that EVF. You don't have to power up the camera manually. 
the EVF does it automatically. So let's talk some video specs because I primarily used this little camera to shoot video while I was on vacation. I decided I wanted to uh, vlog our trip, which meant I was going to do a daily vlog where every day I created a new video about our trip and uploaded it to YouTube. And so if you wanna see some of that footage, I'll actually link to it in the description below so that you can view how this camera worked for me every single day uh, for about two weeks I was filming with this camera and I'm still filming with this camera just because it's fantastic. So it does shoot in uh, Sony's XAVC S format. You have to have a faster memory card in order to get some of those higher end recording features out of it. Um, but it also shoots AVC HD and you can shoot MP4s with it as well if you need to. So staggering about this camera is that at HD 1920 by 1080, it will do up to 960 frames per second. That's if you're shooting in NTSC. If you're shooting in PAL, it'll do up to 1000 frames per second. Um, so that means it's, it'll allow you to slow your footage down 40 times. So slow it down 40x, and you could even stretch it further than that if you want, if you have good software, and get some really cool slow motion out of this camera while still maintaining a full 1080p HD resolution. Staggeringly enough, it also does 4K internal, up to five minutes of 4K recording, which I've played around a little bit and I uploaded a video uh, to this YouTube channel as well, showcasing some of that HD, or I'm sorry, some of that 4K footage um, uncompressed just out of the camera. Now, that video is kind of real life scenario, so I didn't use some of the pro, more pro level like S-Log2 and you know, the different picture profiles, I basically just set it to 4K and record and put that video up so that you can see the quality that you're able to get out of this little camera. It does overheat a little bit and it sucks the battery dry when shooting in 4K. So if you're gonna shoot in 4K, you're gonna need an extra battery. Um, I picked up one of these extra batteries, which I've yet to actually use. I'm not shooting much in 4K and I've been able to get this camera to last pretty much all day on a battery charge. It also uh, allows dual recording, which means that you're able to uh, shoot video and photos at the same time, up to 17 megapixel photos while you're shooting video, which is a pretty neat feature. So if you know that you wanna be shooting photos and video at the same time, you're gonna have that option. Um, and then manual focus assist with, uh, with peaking definitely helps when you are shooting in that manual focus and you're trying to focus on something, uh, the focus assist helps zooming in so that you can see exactly what you're focused on and then have that focus peaking so that you can tell for sure that you're focused on that item. So like I said, I purchased this camera because I wanted something small and pocketable and I was gonna be doing this vlog. I needed something that had a good articulating screen, which as you can see, the screen on this articulates all the way up and back. So if I was recording something, uh, you know, kind of recording myself, I can see on the screen as I hold this camera up, I can see myself and make sure that the shot is framed up properly. So the screen also articulates down so that you can, uh, if you're holding the camera up, for example, like at a concert or, or up high, you can, you can still see the screen really well. So it articulates in many different angles, which is really nice. It also has a built-in flash, which I don't typically use on point and shoots just because the built-in flash typically isn't that good. It usually uh, tries its best not to blow somebody's eyes out and make them red. And then it usually has built-in red eye reduction, which means you're gonna lose the color, the natural color of that person's eye, most likely. So I don't typically use it. What I do like about this flash is that it is, you can move it, you can adjust it. Um, I don't think that's a feature per se, but I typically, if I'm in a room where the ceilings are relatively normal height, I can bounce the light off the ceiling instead of shooting it straight into somebody's face. So instead of shooting that light right into somebody's face, I could bounce it off the ceiling and then back down onto their head and their face and get a much more attractive lighting for them but I typically don't use it. And this camera does pretty decent in low light, so it's very rare that I have to pop the flash up and start to use it. 
So the buttons on this camera are small because it is a small camera. However, once you become familiar with using them, it's not too challenging to use those buttons and make adjustments to the camera and get what you need done quickly. So let's take a look at the menu really quick. I'm gonna power this camera up and actually show you a little bit um, of what this camera does on the back end. So let's go into the menu. Um, here's that ND filter I was talking about. I can actually go and turn that ND filter on and off. Um, it has settings very similar to the high-end uh, Sony Alpha cameras, which is actually what I'm using to record this video, the A7S, the A5100. Those cameras are fantastic and the menu system is very elaborate and so is this camera. So if I'm shooting, I can choose between different image sizes here. Uh, I can go and choose between my aspect ratio, which the aspect ratio also changes the focal length of the camera. Instead of having a 24 to 70 millimeter if you're at 3.2, if you go down to 16 by nine, you're actually getting a 26 to 76 millimeter lens. So it's changing things a little bit. Um, shoot RAW plus JPEG, very fantastic. I'm always shooting in that, in that feature. And then here are your dual record options that you have available as well. If I go into video mode, so let's go into video mode and take a look at uh, those menu features. So here we are with the file formats. I can choose between these four different file formats. Here's the, uh, the HD file format and then the record settings which t allows me to go all the way up to 120p at 100 megabits per second, which is fantastic. I typically shoot at 60p 50 megabits per second just to keep the file size under control, but it's still a relatively large file size. So here we have the 4K settings. We can go into the 4K and it looks like my recording device isn't gonna allow me to send uh, the menu over to my recording device. So let's just go right back and take a look at the high frame rate settings. So here we have our high frame rate settings. You could change the bit rate and whether 60, 30, or 24p, and then you can go into your frame rate, which 960, 480, or 240. What do you want as far as your priority, quality or shoot time priority? When you are shooting at such a high frame rate, there's more of a chance for error, and so the camera will decide for you. If you choose quality, it's going to make sure that it makes that image perfect, that video perfect, and it doesn't have any issues. Where shoot time priority, it may drop some frames, it may lower the quality a little bit, uh, the blending of those frames a little bit um, in order to shoot longer. So depending on what you're going for. And then start trigger or end trigger with the record timing, how do you want that to go? So lots of neat features here in the menu as far as being able to set custom white balance, uh, being able to bracket and shoot um, multiple exposures, uh, lots of neat features in this camera. So if you wanna see a lot about what I have, have been doing with this camera, because like I said, I originally bought it to vlog and to take photos on vacation and stuff like that, you can check out my personal YouTube channel where there's a lot of videos that I shot with this camera and the Sony Action Cam. Um, this camera is beautiful. If you head over to ditchauto.com, I'll have the link below the description here. There'll be some photos you can check out so that you can kind of get an idea of how good those photos look. I'm not gonna bother putting them in a YouTube video here because they're just gonna be compressed and it's not gonna help you. So head on over to ditchauto.com where you'll be able to see the uh, original photos that come out of this camera and then make sure to check out that 4K video that I uploaded because the video quality that comes out of this camera is phenomenal. The next thing that I plan to do is actually shoot some 4K video with the Atomos uh, Shogun, which will allow me to get even better quality 4K video out of this little camera, just for the heck of it, just to see. And I may, I may upload that to YouTube as well. So thanks for checking out this lengthy review. I know there's a lot more to say about this camera. Um, I think it just takes using it, it takes experiencing it. It is a more expensive camera, currently priced at around $950. 
I think it's worth it because by the time that you spend the money to get uh, a, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera and a lens that can perform and do what this camera does, you're gonna be in for it much over uh, $950. So fantastic camera. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about this camera, there is a link below in the description that will take you to Amazon where you can look at this camera and see the prices and see all the other specs and all that good stuff. So thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to head over to Ditch Auto. And if you wanna talk photography with the rest of us, head on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Ditch Auto. Thanks a lot and we'll see you next time.